thank you so much. Uh, my name is Dave Letterman. I'm the host of the show, host of, host of my very own show. I've had my very own show here, here on NBC for the last five years, uh, although no one is sure why. <laughs> Whew, well, I, I guess everybody knows yesterday the New York Giants uh, got in... It's nice, you know, the Mets uh, won the World Series last year, and now the Giants are going to the Super Bowl, and I, and I, and I, and I gotta tell you something, I haven't seen this many excited New Yorkers since they made shoplifting a misdemeanor. <laughs> because... to news from Washington, our nation's capital. Doctors have told President Reagan now to uh, take it easy for the next six weeks. They said specifically, don't do any heavy lifting. I'm sorry, I, I don't see this guy doing much heavy lifting anyway. Nancy, give me a hand with the sofa, will you? Let's take it into the game room. This was kind of surprising, Paul. Uh, now, here's a good example of something that's able to, for us, put the world into proper perspective. A global viewpoint, if you will. Hit us with that global viewpoint, Ben. <laughs> Let us have it. An anthropologist who has just returned from New Guinea says he has discovered a tribe there that is so primitive, listen to this, they only know about two Star Trek movies. <laughs> But doesn't that somehow put the globe socio-politically into perspective for you, culturally speaking? Yes, it does, and I feel like an enormous weight has been lifted from my show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our show. No, 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 it's not the old late night. It's the brand new late night 87. <laughs> program tonight, Bob Sarlat, a very funny uh, gentleman, Tempest Bledsoe. Have you ever seen this woman, Paul? Tempest? Little girl, I believe, 13, 14 years old. Three T's in her name. Uh, that's right, three T's in Tempest. <laughs> and none in Bledsoe. And she's, right. uh, she's one of the stars of the, uh, huh? Of the uh, Cosby Show. That's right. I know her personally. You watch the show every Thursday night. Yes, I do. Yeah. And I know Tempest. Huh? You do? I know, I know yeah. her, yeah. And also, uh, a gentleman who's been in the news recently, uh, and a fine football player to boot, as we say. Uh, from the Oklahoma Sooners, linebacker Brian Bosworth. Linebacker. And, uh, and among other things tonight, we're going to find out just exactly what a Sooner is. Do you know what a Sooner is, Paul? No, I do not, sir. It has, I think now, not that I'm positive, but I think that it has something to do with uh, land rushing. Years and years and years ago, huh? They did what? Stagecoaches. Stage they pushed westward, and they ended up in Oklahoma. Oh, no wonder they would call them Sooners then. No, but they, the, these people who eventually uh, became the, the populace of the territory of Oklahoma were their earliest, and hence they were called Sooners? No. No? When they opened up the Oklahoma, the Oklahoma Territory, right? They had to say midnight, everybody was going to start. Midnight, you had to start, right. right. But there were some guys that started. Paul, early. are you paying attention? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I, some, I definitely. Some started. people started sooner. Sooner. Those sooner. were the Oklahomans, and right. they became, thank you very much, Bill Wendell, our announcer. Here's our good friend, Paul. by that, that response, and I'm, I'm, I feel a very warm feeling inside, because I know with this show, I always know where I'm going to be every night really late, and it's a very nice, it's a comforting feeling. How was your, how was your weekend, Paul? Pretty nice. I went up to Montreal, actually, yeah. on, on Friday night. Yeah. A friend of mine named Dave Smythe had a, uh, a, Smythe? Little, a play opening, yeah. 
right. called Fire, a, a play, a kind so of. So you just dropped in to enjoy the opening. Swung up there for the opening. Very of his supportive play, of you as a friend. Thank you very much. Yeah. What did you do this weekend? Uh, I spent the entire weekend in my cellar draining the boiler. <laughs> Don't do any heavy lifting while you're down. No. Have you ever have you ever overfilled a boiler and then had to drain it a little? Uh, I never overfill uh, a boiler. <laughs> I always say, Just you know, the right amount in be the boiler. conservative, if yeah. anything, when it comes to that. Yeah. I, w I was in the, in the cellar most of Sunday afternoon draining out uh, gallon after gallon of rusty water. And uh, I'll probably get hepatitis as a result. Well, why don't you let me come over and do that for you? Would you mind? I'll drain yours. Very. Because I won't gracious. fill it up too far. Well, too see, fall. that was my problem. I turned it on Saturday to fill it up, and then I went out and did something else, and uh, I came back, and it was overfilled. You know yeah. what happens if you overfill your boiler, don't you? It'll heat up, and the heat and the pressure become so great, it will explode and kill you and your neighbors. <laughs> that's you that's the truth, by the way. That You can take that to the bank, as I used to say on my old show, Beretta. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, and by the way, Home Shopping Networks, you have three more weeks to get off the air. Three more weeks, and then that's it. We don't, we don't like you. We, we don't want you on television. You're a disgrace to television as God intended it to be. Take your cheap little gadgets, pack up, and get out of town. Three more weeks, and then your history. Thank you. Oh, look, Paul, one of your fav favorite segments here, Dumb Ads. Oh, Dumb Ads. That's right. I love Dumb Ads. Dumb Ads, not only Dumb Ads, but Dumb Ads 87. Dumb Ads. Actual little advertisements from uh, actual periodicals you know, published say all over. Yes, I got to say one thing. I, at the beginning of the show, I didn't really understand this thing, you know, how this type of comedy uh -huh. where... You know, I thought a small town news would just right. be like a kind of quaint country kind of comedy yeah. on a, you know, around a big pot of stew. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, the kind of thing that Gordy Tapp might do on, uh, on Hee Haw. Hee -haw. You know, but now right. I realize that small town news, it's you know, it's very right. cosmopolitan and kind of uh, right. ironic. But th this is not small town news. This is dumb ads, <laughs> and they're 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 nothing alike. No, dumb ads '87 right there. go, our first dumb ad, the best wrestling book ever. An ad for the best wrestling book ever. Will you kids please turn down the TV? I'm trying to read. Mm, dumb ad number two. This is for the discount den, Bloomington, Indiana. Here it is right there. We have it all. Christmas lights, gift wrap, gift tags, condoms, bows. It's, uh, it's an old uh, Hoosier tradition. You hang them above the fireplace. On the... <laughs> da, 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 dee, dee, dee. A dumb ad number three. Try this luxurious kid skin look jacket, free for 30 days. Then it can be yours for $16.99 with credit approval. <laughs> I I'm sorry, sir, but our credit check shows that you're three payments late on your vinyl pants. Speaking of vinyl pants, is MTV still on the air, Paul? I'm not sure. They're doing something odd over there, aren't they? I don't, uh, I'm not exactly sure what's going on over there. Why do you ask? Are well, you I concerned? thought you would be my conduit for information on do MTV. Do you want me to go over there and... I don't know, it just seems like I don't know anybody on the, uh, uh MTV anymore. It's all different now. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, this comes to us from, uh... <laughs> Moving out. It's a trucker's newspaper. Moving out. Traveler's World, exit 15 of uh, I-80. Truckin' Bozo Dale Summers. Here live in person. Stop in medium till midnight. Medium midnight till 5 a.m. So, Mrs. Summers, what is, uh, what is your boy Dale doing these days? Is, is he still at Juilliard? <laughs> Here's something for a New Jersey club. Wet Banana Entertainment Complex. Ladies mud wrestling, children under 10 free. <laughs> kids, 
kids, kids, kids. Look, I know you had your heart set on the new Care Bears movie, but we can get you in free over at the Wet Banana. Hit me. Uh, here we go, an ad that says, asparagus thicker than a man's thumb. Hey, 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 wait a second, that is a man's thumb. I don't know what that was. I don't care. It's Monday. It's a brand new show. It's a brand new year. Here we go. Boy, look at the size of this dumb ad, will you? Paul, look at that. That's a, that's a jumbo ad the right bear, there. The bear. The yeah. bear. Sometimes the bigger, the dumber. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true in life, you know. Yeah. Uh, sometimes. Here's an ad for Zydex Corporation. The damn thing's a quarter mile long. God, something's gone wrong at the asparagus plant. How are we doing on time? We're done? Oh, one more? Oh, I, I hate to run the show long. I'm nothing if not punctual, and you, you know... Huh? What? Huh? One more? Huh? Let me know when that gets annoying, will you? Huh? Huh? <laughs> Too late for that, I think. Uh, and finally, Paul, cover me on this. We have an ad for Chi-Chi's Mexican Restaurant. Save up to $4 when you feel a little Mexican. Uh, a wonderful show. Uh, Brian Bosworth is here, Tempest Bledsoe and Bob Starlight. CBY Chorus. There's just nothing like the taste of something as good as TCBY. So everybody singing the praises of TCBY winter warmers, hot apple grapes, hot apple delights, fresh Belgian waffles, and hot bud sundaes. Yum! Take it from me, TCBY gives you all the pleasure and none of the guilt. Folks, welcome back to the show. We've got a good program tonight, don't you think, Paul? Yeah, all an things considered, one. a very nice, very nice show, suitable for entertainment in your home with your family. <laughs> Our first guest tonight is said to be the best linebacker playing college football today, and uh, some say he may be the best ever. Uh, his behavior off the field, we take a look at some action there of the man, uh, has gotten as much press and attention as his play of the game. 
Oh, my. Oh, Lord. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome him here tonight. It's the Boz, number 44, from the Oklahoma Sooners. Please welcome Brian Bosworth. Hey, Brian. Nice to see you. How are you? Have a seat, sir. How you doing? I'm good. I'm doing well. Happy New Year. Well, happy New Year to you. Uh, now, we saw some videotape there of you in action, and you, uh, you hit hard. You look like you're what they would describe as a punishing hitter. Is that a fair assessment of how you play? I, I'd use that punishing, not, I'd use that word. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, you're not trying to hurt people, though, are you? Um, yeah, I am. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, really? You're trying to hurt them? Well, you're out there to intimidate people, and, you know, football is not a passive game. You go out there to, to do your job, and uh -huh. football players hurt people. Yeah, and, and what about when, uh, do you ever get hurt doing that? Yeah, I get, I get hurt a little bit, but, uh, I enjoy getting hurt. You know, I think other football players enjoy getting hurt. It's, you know, you, you thrive off of that. But you're, you're talking now about just, just a little, like a bruise or a twisted ankle or something, just to get the, the adrenaline turned up a notch, right? A little blood. You see some blood. You see them wiped on the... That's why you see uh, people on the sidelines, players will be picking up scabs and stuff and rubbing on their pants. <laughs> get a little blood on their pants. Oh, I see. It makes them look a little, uh, a little tougher, more primeval. Little tougher, yeah. yeah. Uh, and do you, do you, do you, are you in a position to talk to the guys you're playing against, your opponents? Yeah, we talk quite a bit. It's, most of it's, you know, eth ethical type stuff. Um, you talk ethics on the field is what you're saying? Yeah, we talk ethics, political, you know, <laughs> positions in life, but uh, we do have fun with each other. And do you try and a lot of it can't be repeated. No. But do you try and intimidate uh, the other team verbally? Yeah, we do. Um, but you can't, in, you can't intimidate older players. You intimidate young, inexperienced players, and the other, other players just kind of... Everybody else has fun with it. Uh -huh. and, and what would be your particular way of say? Say you're uh, you're lining up against a guy who is uh, I don't know maybe a sophomore or a freshman, uh, been uh, playing less than you have. <laughs> what what would you say to that person? Uh, after well, after, you, after I you tackle him, a guy, yeah, yeah. You, first you you try to go for the head, and uh, you'll twist the neck a little bit, and uh, after that you'll uh, make sure that he understands that you'll be out there all day, and you'll probably be his worst nightmare. Yeah. And you say that to him, or just try and demonstrate it by twisting his neck? Well, the, the, <laughs> is that what you, that's the first. That's the first thing you twist. The you neck. do go for the head, though. Well, that's yeah, the biggest part of the body. You know, you, uh -huh. you, you get the neck, and then you, you wrench a little bit. And uh, to me, that, that's the most intimidating thing you can do because players tend to, to look at the, uh, the head a little more than they would the rest of the body. <laughs> I mean, uh, well, I think that's probably true in life as well. I mean, people yeah, start messing yeah. with the head. You can have like a four hundred dollar suit, and if you're missing a head, <laughs> nobody, nobody's going to notice. No, it just doesn't make any difference. Now, now, are you are you going to go back to Oklahoma and play next year or not? Well, these last two weeks have been really like a nightmare for me. And, uh, well, tell people what happened. But first of all, there was the, the, the drug test for the Orange Bowl, the right? The drug test, and then... Um, it turned I, up positive for some steroid positive use. And, uh, you know, I, I put myself in a position where I was discussing the degrees of right and wrong. And right. then, uh, under the establishment of the rules, I was wrong. I just wanted to point out the fact that there were some circumstances other than the fact of what they caught me with. And, and the circumstances essentially were what? I took a legal drug under a doctor's prescription. Uh -huh. And uh, I took them nine months prior to before the, the bowl game actually took place. And, and you say that the prescription was for rehabilitation purposes? Yeah, it, it was. It was for a, a purpose. Yeah. Um, I was hurt, injured, uh, was not able to, to perform up to peak. And I wanted to do that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, most players will do that. I didn't take them to build muscle. You've never done that to, to bulk yourself up? No. The, yeah. As a matter of fact, the drug I took was not a drug that you take to, to build muscle. Yeah, that's it's what not, I understand. Yeah. And uh, then the second incident was... I think I, uh, you know, those hefty bags, you, you push and you push, and I think I just broke through a hefty bag, and, and uh, you, I just pushed the line too far, yeah. and I put my coach and my school in a position where they had no other choice uh, with the shirt incident down in Miami. Now, what did the shirt say? This was during the Orange Bowl. You're walking around on the sidelines, oh. and you're... Uh, the shirt said uh, NCAA, National Communists Against Athletes. National Communists Against, against Athletes. athletes. Yeah. Um, and this, now, this was just your way of sort of stating... Your you know, position against the uh, exactly. You know, they you took something they away from me. Yeah, they took something away from me. The Orange Bowl was important to me right. as a player. Uh, I wasn't referring to Arab America as being uh, no. communist. I was re referring to the fact that they took something away from me that was important. And I uh, just uh, wanted people to understand that that I was going to stand up for what I thought was right. 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 And and now you you you're saying you have have regrets for having done yeah, that. Yeah, because I did push the line too far. I, like I said, I don't want to discuss the degrees of right and wrong. I was sure. wrong under the establishment yeah. of the rules. Yeah. 
but uh, there are circumstances involved. Let me ask you a question. How big is your neck exactly? <laughs> Uh, what 20. size shirt do you wear? Uh, 18 and a half, 19. 18 and a half, 19. It's about... about <laughs> uh, we'll uh, do a commercial here. We'll be right back with uh, Brian... If you want fish that really tastes fresh... <laughs> You'll love the fresh taste of Vandy Camps. But you gotta catch them first. Vandy Camps, the freshest ideas in frozen fish. They say decaffeinated coffee is good for you. Then they turn around and get you wondering about the way it's decaffeinated. Well, the people who make Sanka want you to know that you can enjoy cup after cup of Sanka without a drop of worry because Sanka is decaffeinated with nothing but pure mountain water and the natural effervescence that makes water sparkle. Naturally decaffeinated Sanka coffee. Now what are they going to say about that? Here's the smorgasburger! First we chop the cheese and chicken. Next we grind the beef and liver. Then we mix it all together. Now you got the smorgasburger. Smorgasburger from Kennel Ration. It's like a smorgasbord in a bowl. Smorgasburger! <laughs> Remember how great you felt when your car was new and beautiful? Boy, what a feeling. But how about now when your car is ugly? Better take a look at Mako's famous half-and-half -half car and get in right now on Mako's chain-wide half-price sale. You get a supreme paint job with new ultraviolet sunscreen coating for longer, better protection. Right, a better paint job at half the price. Here's how. The Mako Supreme Paint Job, regularly $399.95, now only $200. Sale ends February 28th. Act now. He was demanding, like a boss, and that's what I called him. What a perfectionist. Just by listening, he knew if I tuned his engine properly. Usually, I hadn't. This pizza they have named after him must be excellent. He would have it no other way. There's only one frozen pizza worthy of the name Red Baron. He was a legend, one very demanding legend. with us here, Tempest Bledsoe and also Bob Serlot. You were born in Oklahoma? Yeah. So you would know what a Sooner is? I'd know a Sooner. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, sooner is really a, a phrase that, uh, you know, you Sooner steal the land and buy it. <laughs> so, um, you know, they did get a jump early, but uh, uh, they're opportunistic people. And, uh, so it's a very flattering term. People are proud to be Sooners. Yeah, so. people yeah. are very proud to be yeah. Sooners. Uh, now, if you... Um, if, if you... Uh, <laughs> If, if you don't go back uh, and play your uh, senior year at Oklahoma, uh, you'll turn pro, obviously. Where will we end up? Um, well, there's speculation. Um, I'm supposed to be in the top five, so, uh, maybe maybe two. I don't know. It's uh, Right now, Indianapolis has a second pick. I understand Philadelphia's trying to jockey up a, a position. Um, I'd love to end up in New York, but they're going to end up with a 28th no, that pick. Happen, yeah. and, um, uh, would you like playing in Indianapolis? You know, I'm from Indianapolis originally. Well, it's a well, lovely since town. Since you're from Indianapolis, I can't <laughs> come right out and say one way or the other. They I have would... a wonderful school system, Brian. <laughs> you know, if you're thinking of having a family. <laughs> the streets would be safe, but I'm not looking at it that oh, way. Oh, come on. Go play for the Colts. They, they could... I'm sorry, ma'am? What did she say? Count... Count on losing this Sunday. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Leave your room number and we'll have Brian follow you home, okay? Uh, or a chance maybe going to Green Bay? Green, Green Bay or um, Buffalo, yeah. but... What's your preference other than New York? Because that likely the LA won't Raiders. happen. The LA Raiders. Well, they, they have the 15th pick and no one, like, no one likes to deal with Al Davis, so um, that's pretty much out the door. Yeah. Um, I've got a little bargaining tool. I've got the extra year. I can go the supplemental way. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've got a little bit of power, uh, something that a lot of the other players don't have, yeah. so I'm going to use it to my advantage. Yeah. Some leverage there for yourself. Yeah. Now, would you, would you say you decided to play uh, in the NFL next year, would you show up at uh, camp with that haircut as a rookie? Actually, I was referring, I was going to try to get the Letterman cut, but... Uh... <laughs> no, no, you don't want to... <laughs> 
You don't, uh, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. You don't. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, you talk about intimidation. That's the whole. That's the name of the game for rookies, isn't it? Yeah, and you have to go in and, and establish respect. Uh, and I understand I'll have to go in and start all over from scratch. And yeah. uh, I will do that. I won't go in demanding respect. You have to uh, work for it, and, mm -hmm. and uh, it'll be uh, something that you establish. I'll keep my same style. I'll keep the haircut and, and the, the same vocal attitude about myself. But uh, you know, I'll, I'll do it a little more precise man I won't just come right out and then start dogging people right away <laughs> well that's good to know now if, if you went back and played at Oklahoma do you think realistically you'd have a shot at the Heisman Trophy or not or is that something you don't concern yourself with anymore I don't really worry much about the awards anymore the awards right now are so political and and, and you know the things that, are, that encompass the voting on the awards and some of the people really don't even know who the awards are for and, and who the people they're voting for yeah. uh, to me the ultimate goal is winning the national championship, winning games, sure. being successful. What, what did you think of the Fiesta Bowl, by the way? I thought it, I, I, I really wanted Miami to win. Um, I'm very close. That was, that was your only loss of the season, right? Yes, it was. Um, I'm very good friends with Vinny, and uh, I think the time off that Vinny had, he had six weeks of time off yeah. to do the things that, uh, the traveling, the All-American trips. Did you ever wrench Vinny's neck? Speaking of... I got in on Vinny one time, but he's so he's so tall, he's 6'5", I'd have to jump yeah. to get to Vinny's neck. <laughs> he's not worth the trouble. No. Uh, geez, Brian, you know, I've, I've read about you for the last three years, and I've enjoyed watching you play, and it's a pleasure to meet you. Good Thank luck you, to you, whatever happens. Brian Bosworth, we'll be back after Stacey Night Under the Gate. Silver bullet. Hey, you're Don Adams, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> One Coors Light, please. Would you believe? Two Coors Lights. Great. Ring, ring. Hello? It's for you, Don. Terrific. Ah, oh, thanks. Mind if I join you? Mind if I pour? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Missed it by that much. There's no slowing That's down great. with the silver bullet, bullet tonight. tonight. You just did. is not contact Sudafed Dristan. None of these can do what Comtrex multi-symptom cold reliever can, because all by itself it relieves every major cold symptom. I'm really surprised. I've never used Comtrex before, and it really worked. Kim Wojak has just found out what it means when we say Comtrex. That's all. Nothing else. From Bristol Myers. I love this country. It's so fun, yeah. Like this chicken thing, see? This is chicken cube, this is chicken strip, and this is chicken chicken. All white meat. Best tasting part of chicken. Tenderloin, most juiciest part. Comes with fries and coleslaw. And where's only place you get chicken this good? At the fish place! I love this country! Long <laughs> John Silver sounds good to me. Tuesday. Drive me out of here and drive me out of here fast. Henry is kidnapped. I think we ought to talk about this. Will the Hill say goodbye to Goldblum? Dig a grave. Tuesday. America's favorite, the number one deal. Plenty of money on the wheel. Wheel of Fortune. Weekday mornings at 11.30, here on TV 13. One of the great things about Heritage Cablevision is that you can take it one step at a time. You can start with Heritage Basic Service for less than $15 a month. Then, you can step up with a premium channel for only $9.95 more a month. And, if you take two premium channels, you'll get a special package price. So, step up to Heritage Cablevision. The price is nice. So is the view. The Three Quarters at Burger King with new Hot Topper. When they're hot, they're hot, and they're cold. Hot Topper, three double cheeseburgers, they're a quarter pound. We got a double desire. They're gonna put on the fire. There's barbecue sauce with cheese and bacon, too. If they have and cheese, it's sure to see. Then you don't want to miss any mushroom and swim. But Hot Toppers won't last. So get to Burger King fast. Toppers, appearing for limited engagement. We know, we know how burgers should be. Put a little
little sparkle in your life with KEZT-FM, today's easy listening. The fresh, easy sound of EZ-104. Very special music that makes you feel so good. EZ-104, KEZT-FM. Put a little sparkle in your life with the best variety of your favorite songs. Turn on today's easy listening. EZ-104, KEZT-FM. This is WHO TV 13 Des Moines. Thank you so much. Isn't that a uh, isn't that a swell band? Aren't they? Uh... Uh, tomorrow on our program, actress Heather Thomas will be here. And uh, comedian Gilbert Gottfried and also Bud Wentz will be here tomorrow. That's Bud Wentz. B-U-D-D-W-E-N-T-Z. -E Bud Wentz from the New York Hall of Science. It's where, where Batman used to live, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, and now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time once again for a very popular segment on this program. It's Axe Mr. Melman. Now, here are the rules for tonight's proceeding. Mr. Melman appears courtesy of Atlantic Records, where he is currently waxing their lobby. <laughs> the opinions expressed by Mr. Melman are not necessarily his own. He gets most of them from things he overhears in the steam room. <laughs> Home viewers are advised that this segment will be over in approximately five minutes. We'll see you then. <laughs> and finally, remember, Mr. Melman is an attorney. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bud Melman. <laughs> wonderful television family. I'm Larry Bud Melman. I'm here to answer your questions about personal problems, money problems, and affairs of the heart. So let's get started. Larry, you know, I, I couldn't help but notice that you're not wearing your flowing caftan tonight. <laughs> no, no more flowing caftan. I saw a tape of my last appearance and I looked like an idiot. <laughs> Why didn't someone say something to me? I don't want anything like that to ever happen again. Now, let's have the first question. Okay, thanks, Larry. So you're steamed about that captain yes. thing, huh? Well, I don't blame you. Who has the uh, first question Thank tonight you, for Mr. Melman? Hi, what's your name, sir? Dave Scott. Stand up, Dave. Where are you from? I'm from Sable, Long Island. Where? Sable, Long Island? Yeah. And you go to school out there? You work out there or both? I go to school up in Hyde Park. I see. And what yeah, are you studying? Uh, to be a chef at the Culinary Institute. Oh, good. That sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. You have a, uh, you have a question tonight for uh, uh, Mr. Melman? Yeah. Uh, Larry, uh, I just wanted to know. <laughs> I had a uh, class today at the Culinary, and I made a consomme. Oh, consomme. It just didn't come out quite clear. I had a lot of trouble. The chef was yelling and everything. Can you tell me what to do about that? His problem that? is he had cloudy consomme, yeah. Larry. <laughs> Nothing I could do. David, you want a suggestion about your consomme? Oh, yeah. I've got a suggestion for you. <laughs> Put it down the drain. People want something that will stick to their ribs. Something with big chunks of beef and potato. Americans didn't clear the wilderness and tame a continent with their bellies full of consomme. <laughs> sit down, pal, before I come up there and sit you down. <laughs> Bob Rooney, please get this nice person a hundred packs of gum. next for her. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. What's your name? Grace Capuana. Grace, nice to have you here. Where do you live? Staten Island. And you work out there? Work I go in the to city? School. Where do you go to school? St. John's. What are you studying? Education. Uh-huh. And you're gonna be what? Teacher. A teacher. Good for you. Larry, uh, by the way, try and get a breath for some of these answers. <laughs> All right. What what is your question? What will Prince Edward do now that he's been kicked out of the Royal Navy? I think he left. I don't think he was kicked out, was he? Didn't he just leave? Packed it in and left. He left. He left the Royal Navy, uh, Larry. Oh, what a pity. <laughs> Wait a minute, is, th is that on the cards? <laughs> Stick to the cards, okay? <laughs> you take your two-bit opinion somewhere else, pal. <laughs> Great, 
Tracy, I know what you've heard, and it's true. He's staying on the couch at my place. <laughs> He's a young man with a lot of things to sort out. But he makes a damn fine picture of Rob Roy's and always answers the phone politely. <laughs> Which is more than I can say for that sponging King Olaf and his screaming brats. <laughs> Bob Rooney, please give this nice person. Thank you very much. He's a gum. Thank you. That's it? Okay. Uh, we're going to do a commercial. We'll be right back with Tempest Bledsoe. Thank you, Larry. you felt when your car was new and beautiful? Boy, what a feeling. But how about now when your car is ugly? Better take a look at Mako's famous half-and-half -half car and get in right now on Mako's chain-wide half-price sale. You get a supreme paint job with new ultraviolet sunscreen coating for longer, better protection. Right, a better paint job at half the price. Here's how. The Mako Supreme Paint Job, regularly $399.95, now only $200. Sale ends February 28th. Act now. High technology at discount prices. World Radio made that promise in 1935. And year after year for 52 years, that's exactly what it's been. The right products at the right price. World Radio's 52nd anniversary sale is the one you don't want to miss. Our entire reputation is on the line during the sale, so the savings are spectacular. We're out to prove that we are the right store. Save over $70 on this RCA 19-inch color TV, only $279. World Radio, the right store. Hi, I'm Scott Pope. Last week, News Center 13 brought you these top stories. Emotions ran high as the Department of Human Services removed the five Cooper children from their home and their foster parents. In Newton, Ralph Robinson reported live as the involuntary manslaughter trial of Jody Collins officially got underway. And on Tuesday, we brought you the special story of a Dallas Center couple celebrating 72 years of marriage. The stories you want, the news you need, it's all part of the News Center 13 Advantage. Hi, and welcome back to the uh, show, ladies and gentlemen. For the last few years, uh, our next guest has been working on the network, on this network, as Vanessa Huxtable on the Cosby Show, Paul's favorite. Uh, please welcome the only woman I know named Tempest, Tempest Bledsoe. You look very nice. Thank you. Uh, how old are you? Thirteen. So you're just you're just a, a beginner. You're a little kid, aren't you? I like to think of it as a young woman. I'm sorry. <laughs> a young woman. You you certainly are, and thank you for correcting me. <laughs> uh, now the name Tempest. Is there? Uh, I don't I don't know anyone else named Tempest. Is there uh, an interesting story about that? Does it mean something special yeah. to your family other than being your your name? Um. Uh, well, sort of. My mom thought of it, and she thought it would be romantic to hear someone call someone young Tempest. Mm -hmm. So she knew, she, see, my brother's names are James and Wayne. So that's sort of odd, but that's what she knew she was going to name her little girl. Uh -huh. Is it sort, sort of odd that they're named more traditional names? Or yeah. Sort of, I see. They're yeah. sort of odd, too. Are they? <laughs> yeah. How old are your brothers? Um, they're adults. Uh -huh. They're like what? 21, 22? Around that yeah. age. And, and are, they, are they just green with envy because of your success? No. They, really? They have their own names. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, they have their own names. Mm -hmm. um, my brother Wayne. What does he, he do? Is, he's a photographer in Colorado. Yeah. And my other brother James, he is a sitcom writer, a freelance sitcom. Writer. Oh, he's a television writer. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's good. So it's it's sort of the uh, the show the uh, the family is all uh, involved in creative arts in some yeah. fashion. Yeah. Um, now, how did you get this job? Um, basically, when I was in Chicago, that's where I started. Mm -hmm. They called me to do an so not an open audition, but they had lots of kids there. 
So um, they called me to do this audition for a show with Bill Cosby, and automatically I assumed a cartoon or a variety or something like One that. One of those Fat Albert deals again. Yeah. Again. <laughs> but <laughs> that's sort of done with, so I thought we'd say, well, what am I going to do? Uh -huh. So um, I went to the audition, and I read a couple of times mm -hmm. at a casting agent. And then I did a tape of myself and sent it to Bill Cosby and the network. And then I went out to Los Angeles for the final audition with right. another girl from my part, and I won. Yeah. I won. Uh, had you done any acting before? Um, I started when I was four. I basically did commercials and sang jingles and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So this is a pretty good gig for a kid to have right out of the box. Yes. You know? yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry, a young woman to have. Thank you. Um, uh, and uh, now, I guess you quit school, right? You don't go to school. No, I go to school. All right, now tell me about this. This is one of these bogus show business schools, isn't it? <laughs> no. Now, the name of it is Professional Children's School. Professional Children's School. school yes. Yeah, and where are they located? Manhattan. Manhattan. Is it like a station wagon on 15th Street? Or... <laughs> no. Okay, this is a real school. Uh-huh. Now, other kids can go here, but basically it's Professional Children's School because it allows you to go on correspondence for a long period correspondence, of time. Correspondence, right. And, and, and do you have a tutor that comes onto the set with you? Yes, I do. And, and <laughs> now, don't, here, now, don't get defensive about this. <laughs> many hours a day do you spend with the tutor? Um, on average, about four or five on a good day. That yeah. depends on how much yeah. I'm in the script that week. But uh, realistically, like uh, yesterday, how many hours, or yesterday was Sunday. Um, yeah. Like tomorrow, how many hours will you be with her tomorrow? About four. Really? Honestly. Now, are you a good student? Very. Yeah. And, and are you uh, at a comparable level with people who would be going through normal school? Mm -hmm, I have to be. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are checking on me. Now, um, who checks on you? My grades go to, I just found this out, my grades go to the stage manager. Oh! Well! Hey! No! But the thing is... you got your work cut out for you, young lady. Our stage manager is checking and he watches us very carefully. He uh -huh. The production company, people at our school, our school coordinator... You know what the stage family. managers do here? You can't smoke in here, okay? <laughs> But, Tempest, are you, are you convinced, are you satisfied, uh, are your parents certain that you're getting a quality education out of this? Yes. Deal? My mother's my manager. She makes sure everything I do is quality. But the grades go right to the stage manager. <laughs> they go to a lot of places that I wasn't aware of, uh -huh. and I get straight A's. Well, you're sure if the stage manager is playing with them. <laughs> is he going to give you, like, a D in something? Uh, I think for a long time my grades went to the page out there in the hall. <laughs> Um, well, I'm just, I'm just concerned about you because, you know, show business and all. Yes, yeah. it's, it's possible for a lot of things to happen. Yeah. Now, are you you're making a, a lot of money and, a, and, a, and you're taking care of it, right? Very, yeah. yeah. Now, it goes where? Into a trust fund? Mm hmm Not to the stage manager. <laughs> no. no. It's the law that mm -hmm. I have a trust fund. Yeah. And, and how, does, how does the cast get along? Now, how many are in the cast on a, on a weekly basis? It's a pretty good-sized cast. Is, like um, seven, eight well, people in the regular cast, right? Six. Six. And, and everybody get along all right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and what is Bill like? You ever see him? Oh. <laughs> See, people think that, like, he comes in on Thursday, they give him a script, he goes on ad-libs, cue cards, and all this stuff. Well, that's no. what I think. <laughs> no, but um, we work together from Monday through Thursday, mm -hmm. and he's there as l maybe longer than we are. Mm -hmm. Is he nice to you? Does he treat you yeah. well? What did he give you for Christmas? For Christmas? Yeah. We have, um, he gives everybody the same thing. Well, so what was it? What did we get? We got, every year we get a monogram of something. Last year we got a snakeskin watch, and this year we got a big sweatshirt. Sweatshirt. Well, pants. that's nice. Yeah. And he, he's, he doesn't yell at you? Oh. Yeah. Treat you well? Very. Yeah. What do you do for fun? What are your hobbies? Because I know you're either working or in school. Yes. <laughs> uh, so what do, what do you do for fun? Well, I collect stickers, and I read a lot. I read horror good, novels. Good, You should be reading a lot. That's mm -hmm. good. Good. Nice to have you. Have the stage manager call me. I want to talk about your education. Thank you very much for being here. We'll, we'll be back here with Bob Sarlacc.
here. I'm looking for the perfect TV. A 27-inch with black matrix, 110-degree angle of deflection, computer accurate digital access tuning, 178 channels, built-in stereo decoder, and it's got to have infrared remote control that runs the TV, cable, and VCR, even if they're different brands. You know what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. You want a Magnavox. The perfect picture, the perfect remote. Nobody puts it together like Magnavox. Some microwave popcorns talk about how they pop, but come on, how about taste? I want the best. Pillsbury butter popcorn tastes best. Gotta pop best, gotta be fun with the buttery taste that's number one. Pillsbury microwave popcorn. In tests across America, it's great buttery taste one. When you want it now, and you want it good, we won! <laughs> I'm not married. But I have a roommate, a new roommate. And this one's like a breath of fresh air in my life. I'll be living a long time with this roommate. Introducing new Renews It Roommate Air Freshener, an incredible new long-lasting air freshener. It has more freshening power, so it works twice as long as the leading solid. My roommate and me, our relationship's gonna last. New Renews It Roommate, the long, long, long-lasting air freshener. Grades go right to the stage manager. They're not, they're not fooling around here. Uh, our next guest is a uh, feature reporter on Entertainment Tonight. He is the field announcer for the San Francisco 49ers, and he's also a very funny stand-up comedian who can be seen on January 21st through the 25th at the other cafe in San Francisco. Please welcome Bob Sarlacc. Bob! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for playing the old cheater there. How you doing? Okay tonight? Uh, having a nice time? It's nice to be back here again. I guess since the last time I was here, the big news in music has to be the breakup of Duran Duran. Ooh. How many care, huh? Anybody care? Yeah, I guess uh, they broke up because of artistic differences. Yeah. I guess that just proves that you just can't misplace, a, you know, an eyebrow uh, thing and not, uh, and not have repercussions. You know, it just happens. It's nice to be, you know, the nice thing I find out in rock and roll that I like right now are these CDs, these compact discs they have out now, where you can actually, you know, they redo all these old songs so you can hear them a little bit better than you generally can. It's kind of nice, I picked up a Joe Cocker CD. It's kind of nice because during the solo you can actually hear retching sounds, which is kind of nice. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Everywhere you look now, there are just oldie stations everywhere, rock and roll classics. I'm getting a little tired of it. You know, it's interesting, you find this a lot in these syndicated rock and roll shows, you know, where they actually use oldies to make it look like, you know, these events are happening. And like they say, like, like 1972, the year was March. In that particular year, 500 people drowned in Rapid City, South Dakota. And here's what those kids were dancing to. <laughs> the Candyman, hey, Candyman, yeah. My mother likes these radio shows that deal with medical problems. You know these ones? Dr. Dean Edel. Can you imagine people calling up? I, can, I think it's a vicarious thing if you listen to it. I can't really get into it. You hear these kinds of things. People call in. You hear things like, uh, Dr. Edel, uh, I've got these weeping sores and... Jeez. Uh, I mean, if it was me, wouldn't you say, uh, gee, I got a friend with some weeping sores. It's not exactly mine. But... But it's weird because the, the symptoms are so obvious. I mean, people will call them and say, uh, Doctor, uh, I've been drinking a six-pack of beer after dinner uh, every, about every six months now, and uh, I tell you what, I, I'm kind of getting the headaches. Uh, you think I should cut out the booze? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, my mom likes these things. I went back to see my parents recently. I don't know, if you haven't been back to see your parents in a while, it's kind of fun, like around Christmas time. You sit at home at the table, and maybe you swear, nothing too big, you say something like crap. My mother says things like, Rob, you didn't learn that here. <laughs> As if there is some place where you learn that stuff, you know? Like there's a guy at the park with the blackboard. These are the words. I want you to memorize these, you know? My mom is fun because you go to her house, she saves everything. You look in the cupboard, there's always something that's been there since like 1911, you know what I mean? I, you know, something like Calumet baking powder, picture of the Indian on it. You know how they code date things at the bottom, it says, please use before the end of the Truman administration, you know? <laughs> And her memory's kind of getting bad, so to compensate for this, what she does, she actually goes back to all kinds of events that happened in the history of mankind and come up with the simplest things. I'll say, hey, Mom, what'd you have for lunch yesterday? She'll, let's see, lunch. Let's see, depression was in 29. 
father I married in 41. Your sister was born in 46. Battle of Hastings, 1066. I believe I had salad for lunch. Uh, when you go home, my mom is always on the phone. Now, there are two types of mothers that talk on the phone. The ones that do all the talking, the ones that do all the listening. My mother is a listener. She's so polite. It always sounds like she's answering a true-false test on the phone. You know the kind of mother? Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ah, ah. Oh, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've seen phone calls that make a difference, you know? Oh, no. Not today. <laughs> Thanks for the call, though. <laughs> then the big mother wind up. Ah, okay, then. Okay then, we'll see you then. All righty. Okay then, we'll see you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Get off. Thanks very much. The Cheater the by cheater. Bob Cuban and the Inman. Bob Cupid. Bob Cuban. Bob Cuban and the Inman. Sounds like a K. Yeah, a former gym teacher from St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> Two star. Nice to have you back. Nice to see you again. Nice job, as always. And you got another job. You're working on uh, entertainment tonight. You live in San Francisco. So what do you do? You go down to L.A. every day? Making or? that big flight to L.A., the only place where Wink Martindale's birthday is a three-day weekend. Uh -huh. You're not going to excited. <laughs> But flying back and forth is kind of fun. Uh, I've been, I, I rent cars down there all the time. Yeah. And uh, I have trouble with them. You know, I don't know anything about cars. You know anything about cars? Not much, no. When you get them fixed, by law, they're supposed to show the old part of the car they're taking oh, out. Oh, yeah, yeah. And above here's your old head gas. You can see it's pretty worn out. Yeah. It looks like my head gasket, yeah. <laughs> but they can do whatever they want. Gee, Bob's only cost you 50 bucks, but look at this. We found this German Shepherd in your exhaust pipe. <laughs> yeah, it looks like my dog, yeah. Better put a new one in. Yeah. <laughs> So are you, uh, are you doing stand-up? You're on uh, Entertainment Tonight. You're still doing commercials? Yeah. Yeah, I'm still doing this very show. Have you seen this thing out now for Bayer Aspirin, which is nine out of ten doctors, if they were stranded on a desert island, would recommend Bayer. As if, like, shark infestation, shipwreck, starvation. You're pretty much thinking about aspirin, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Say, sorry, I tried to cut you and eat you last night, Jim. Just this damn headache, you know. Uh... <laughs> cut you and eat you? Cut you and eat you, yeah. <laughs> cut and eat. Yeah. Sometimes they take a product that's already pretty well, well known. They try to call it new and improved. Yeah. It doesn't always make the product better. For example, how many folks have ever had Preparation H now with a new party size? No, Anybody? It's kind of curious. You're going to be... Uh... You're going to be at the other cafe, the 21st through the 25th? That's right. Yeah. Good. Nice to have you here. Thanks for being with hey, us. We'll, we'll do a commercial, and then what do we do after? Duke's been working at the general store almost 13 years. That's like 91 to you and me. And the complete nutrition and Alpha Beef Chunks dinner has helped keep him as healthy as his daughter, who's learning the business from the old pro, Alpo. of relief. Contact 12-hour caplets. They do more than Sudafed and work twice as long as Actifed tablets. Until there's a cure, there's contact. <laughs> Annoyed hates hot quality pizza. He loves to make your hot pizza ice cold. Call Domino's Pizza and avoid the noise. <laughs> We keep the cold out and all this quality in. So when you want quality pizza hot and delicious, Domino's Pizza delivers. One call does it all. Chuck Woolery here. What am I in the middle of here? As host of Love Connection, I get caught in the middle of some romantic situation. I could have really? kissed him right there, but it technically it would have been too soon. The lucky ones start out as big hits. He pushes on the gas and we rear end the car in front of us. And end up as smashing successes. John put his arm around me and he gave me a nice kiss. We kissed again later and then it started to get real melty. Still, the funniest romantic comedy on TV.
Weekdays at 4 here on TV 13. All right, we're out of time. By the way, I love you in Star Trek. Oh, thanks. Nice job. Yeah. Nobody serves a pizza quite like I do. Very good. I Very you know exciting. That was a turning uh, point for the film. Uh, my thanks to Tempest Bledsoe, Brian Bosworth, and Bob Sarlat. Tomorrow it's Heather Thomas, Gilbert Gottfried, and Bud Wentz. Good night, everybody. Thursday, the gang of Cheers gets the word. He and I have officially become engaged to be married. No! And on night court, Mac turns cowboy. I'll go get us something to gnaw on. Oh, God, let it be dead. Then on L.A. Law, Swinties accuses a judge of... Bigotry. Don't stand there calling me a racist. L.A. Law. Thursday. Richard Pryor's oh. playing doctor. It hurts all over. Doctor. Oh, critical condition. Rated R. Starts January 16th. A customer sues a restaurant. Fit into the 